Hey guys, it's Nara. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel if you've been here before. Welcome to another episode of Why Do YouTubers? That period. That's the whole sentence. Why do they? I don't know either. Today we're going to be talking about stupid YouTubers and why they are stupid and the stupid things that they are doing. It is not nice to call people stupid. I don't encourage it. But... All right, today we're going to be discussing a bunch of just not great influencers. I don't want to use the word stupid. Like, it's just not nice. I'm being a nicer person. And it's just not nice to call people stupid. But, like, let's start with the, the dingbat influencer that really inspired me to make a video. The word dingbat just strikes me as a little more kind. So the YouTube twin duo, uh, Nikki and Gabby. Today we're talking about just one of the twins, Nikki. You probably have heard by now that Nikki made a video with one of her friends. And I use that term as a slight to Nikki and not the friend. Um, Cause she obviously is a trash friend, we'll get there called like an income challenge or something. If some of my details are a little bit off, sorry, didn't watch the video. I, I do not watch that girl and I'm not gonna bring myself to go, like I'm not gonna go out of my way to watch content that I know will infuriate me. <laughs> it's not good for my health, okay? I, I can't do it, I'm pregnant, all right? I, I can't put myself through that right now. Basically, the whole point of the video is Look at how poor my friend is and look at how much look at how much money I make. Look how rich I am. Here we go. About nine thousand dollars a week. Like fifty to a hundred dollars a week. <laughs> Three fifty to four hundred dollars a week for a personal chef. <laughs> fifty on groceries. Fifteen hundred dollar mortgage. Not bad. Mine's twelve hundred, so apartment. <laughs> <laughs> Lincoln Aviator twenty twenty. Kia Rio twenty thirteen. Prada. Michael Kors. Yeah. <laughs> Neiman Marcus, Burberry, and Bath and Body Works. <laughs> Forever 21. Now, I'm not going to get up here and bash her like everybody else, <laughs> but I am though. Um, in what world would you think this is okay? This is the problem with people making ridiculous amounts of money on the internet and not having any moral high ground or like, or you know what, even just a moral compass. You don't even have to be a saint. Just literally have morals and respect the people that you care about because when you don't, this is what happens. That's supposed to be your friend who you love and care about and you, you're supposed to cherish that relationship. And you say, hey, come on the internet to my millions uh, does she have does she have millions of subscribers i don't know come on the internet to my fairly large platform and let's talk about how i make so much more money than you it's ridiculous that her friend even like went along with it like i don't care how rich my friend is i don't care how long we've been cool like at the point that you're trying to play me you trying to play me on the internet we can't be friends no more not to mention like why do you think that's good content why do you think Hey, look at how broke my friend is and look at how rich I am. Let's compare. Like, why do you think that's good content? Like if I'm trying to make content that's like fun and enjoyable with one of my closest friends, I'm not going to think, okay, I want to tell the world how much rich I am and my best friend. Like what the, y'all are so dumb sometimes. Like, you see, I said, I didn't want to call anybody stupid. I said, dumb. This may be a bit of a crazy, analogy so like just follow okay J just follow if you guys watch american dad this is like that episode of american dad where steve who you know comes from a well-off middle-class family signs his broke friend <laughs> i hate to say it like that but it's not literally broke he's poor um that's like his whole thing on the show he signs his poor friend snot up for that tv show where they like take poor kids and give them like the three best days of their life. And the whole thing is like public humiliation. Like they're the whole time they're like making fun of how broke he is. And then at the end, 
snot is mad at steve and steve is like why are you mad like i'm trying to help you out like we're friends i wanted you to have a, a you know a good three days because i know you're poor and snot's like yeah but like you're broadcasting my brokenness to the whole world and like making fun of me in the process that's all i could think about when i read some people's like defense of her they were like yeah but she seems like a really good friend to her and she buys her not lots of nice expensive things and i don't think she meant it to be malicious like intentions are cute but intentions mean nothing when you hurt the person that you are supposed to care about like shout out if you can look at a youtuber like publicly broadcasting how broke their friend is to make themselves look better feel better or even just for content and defend it you're mad weird <laughs> like you're a part of the problem this content is literally like i have money my friend broke watch me by chanel friend cannot buy groceries i could talk about how annoying nikki is for that um for probably this whole video but i'm not going to because i have other people I want to talk about let's talk about the internet's favorite super villain and least favorite influencer jeffree star i simply just have a question about jeffree star why does he still do stuff it's annoying that after everything he has done he is still rich and you know what truthfully you forget just how much jeffree star has done and got away with um, I just earlier today was watching D'Angelo Wallace, by the way, mwah, quality content. I just was watching his video on Jeffree Star and like, I forgot just how much nonsense, drama and bigotry this man has actually been a part of. It's like really, it's really bad. Like it's worse than you remember. Go watch D'Angelo's video and I promise you'll actually like feel disgusted. Like I kind of felt sick to my stomach. That could be because I'm pregnant, but dramatic effect after having a refresher course that was fabulously done might i add seriously go watch d'angelo's content it's it's so good after having a refresher course and just how much he has done and pretty much gotten away with i'm annoyed that he's not only still rich because i mean like okay people do things but what are we gonna do like take their money from them you know so it's bad enough that he's still rich and there's nothing we can do about it. And the reason that really matters in this situation is because Jeffree Star has shown us time and time again that that's what matters to him. Like to some people, their biggest thing is like no matter what, they can't lose their family. No matter what, they want to be respected by their peers. Jeffree Star is like openly one of those people that's like everything is fine in my life if I have money. So he still has the one thing that means the world to him despite all of his despicable actions. But what really is upsetting me about him and what really is like it boils my blood when I see that like he's still posting pictures and like he's still on Twitter like nothing happened and like you don't get to be Jeffree Star and do the things that Jeffree Star has done and still enjoy your platform like he's literally still parading around in Louis Vuitton outfits. What's wrong? <laughs> it's it shouldn't be funny it shouldn't be funny but it is it's like this all feels like one bad snl sketch or like one bad episode of family guy like this is real. <laughs> this is so sad this is real life a man who is absolutely racist and is co-signed multiple at this point like predators and pedophiles just has a platform and you know why he still has a platform because there are still people that care about him i'm gonna throw up like this man really still has people like writing for him on twitter if you have a public twitter account we ain't talking about a burner account a twitter account where your face name and like actual thoughts and opinions are attached to it publicly and you're defending jeffree star are you not embarrassed it's really embarrassing that is like that's bad it's it's like people who why does everything go back to donald trump for me i hate that man it's like people that put up trump flags and like maga stickers and wear maga hats and then they go 
I'm not racist. Why would you think I'm racist? Like if you're publicly supporting a racist and you know that people will see that Trump flag or that Trump sticker or that MAGA hat and potentially associate you with the racist and potentially think that you're racist and that's fine and you still do it, then you're complacent in racism. So you're a racist. It's the same logic. You're publicly supporting Jeffree Star. The way that Jenna Marbles did a fraction of what Jeffree Star did and still felt the need to deplatform herself while Jeffree Star, after having to address all of the disgusting things that he did, the next day is like, here's my Birkin bag. Like, what the? Did you all really think we were visiting the land of racist YouTubers and stupid influencers without talking about Miss Tana Mojo? Isn't it just so crazy that like, there was a time on my channel where I supported Tana and Shane and Jeffrey, and it's like, wow, 2020 really has given me some growth. That was embarrassing, okay? We don't talk about that time. That's, that, that was the dark ages. Before I get to Tana's recent disappointments, let me just say that the reason I had to personally stop supporting her outside of the racism and the just her being her, the reason is that I truthfully started seeing through her little act, her little facade. And the reason that pissed me off real good was because Tana tries to market herself as being real. I always want to keep it real with you guys. I always want to be transparent. Oh my gosh, she used to love that word. I always want to be transparent. And you know, I just want to really let you guys in. But no, you don't. Um, And that's okay. You don't have to. Like, it is not anybody else's business. Like, what you do, what you say, your personal life, your private life, your relationships, none of that is anybody's business, your emotional struggles. But don't say that you're going to share it for attention and then continue to put on an act. Does that make sense? Hold up your end of the bargain. You tell us, hey, watch my content. I'll give you a transparent, relatable real youtuber and we watch your content and like you're fake laughing and like putting on a front and a very obvious one i don't understand how people still watch her content and cannot like i don't know maybe i'm mature maybe i outgrew her content but like when i look at her videos all i see is like fake laughing and like self-depreciating jokes it's like a way to try to be relatable like i don't there's nothing that feels authentic to me about her content anymore at all. But enough of my opinion that no one asked for. Um, let's talk about Tana's recent apology video. The first issue with this apology video is that it took stupid long. It took stupid long. She said multiple times that she was working on it and that the apology video was pending when it actually wasn't. Um, not to mention, like, can we just be real for a second? I am somebody that suffers with depression and anxiety and I understand what it's like to be in a slump or to want to put things off because of your mental illness. Um, like I get it. But when you tell people, hey, I know I owe you an apology and it's coming. Let me just get my thoughts together. Let me just do this. Let me do that. But like instead of doing that, you are actually just like out partying. <laughs> it's like it just be transparent. The thing about Tana is it's like why? It gets to a point where it's like, she's a known liar, but like, why lie? If you're not ready to film the apology video, then say that. The people that already don't like you because you owe them apology still won't like you. Why don't you just be honest? Not really ready to film that video right now. Not in the right headspace. Give me a month. Give me this amount of time. I'll do it. But don't lie and say that it's coming when you know you haven't even started drafting your whack-ass notes apology. I've said this before. And I've said this before in direct relation to Tana Mojo as well. If you have to lie to have an audience to keep people interested, like whatever, maybe the internet just shouldn't be like, like influencing just might not be for you. If you have to lie for people to be interested in you, find another job. Because it's, it's getting weird. It's really getting weird. Like there should just be no reason to lie. If you're not filming the video yet, just say, hey, I'm not filming it yet. I'm not ready. I don't know what I want to say. And I haven't taken the time to think about it. I'll let you guys know. Everybody would have stopped asking for it if you would have just said that. It's like, do you think we cannot handle your honesty? 
Is that why you're lying? Are you lying because it makes you feel good? Like, I just, I really want to know. I really want to know. Like, Shane Dawson likes to make documentaries about people. We need to make a documentary about why you won't stop lying all the goddamn time. Let's get into that. I, I really need to say this. I really hope that soon we are going to enter, like, a new wave of influencers. Because I am so, I'm so tired. Like, if I see one more thing about Shane Dawson or Jeffree Star or Tana Mojo or Tati or, like, I'm, I'm going to throw up. At this point, like, let's not pretend that we don't all love good tea and that, like, drama isn't sometimes necessary. Work and have, like, friendships in, like, the same, like, similar circles. There's bound to be drama. That's not the issue. It's that it's the same seven people every couple of months going on an apology tour. Like, bro. My god and lastly i would like to wrap up this video by reminding you that i am beautiful and i'm not a racist and i'm not a pedophile and that's why you should go ahead and subscribe to me those are like the that's the bare minimum at this point so i meet the i meet the bare minimum requirements go ahead and subscribe thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed me ranting for like 10 plus minutes if you enjoyed leave me a like comment subscribe all that stuff follow me on my socials and i'll see you guys in my next video